Let's say we have a parameterized curve in space. This curve is defined by the position function with x component, y component, and a z component. Let's look at unit tangent vectors at various points along our curve. Remember, a unit tangent vector is defined as the derivative of our position vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of our position vector. Remember, we call the derivative of our position vector the velocity of the curve, and the magnitude of the velocity of the curve is the speed of the curve. Another thing to remember is that the magnitude of a unit vector is constant. Its value is equal to exactly one. So each of these unit vectors at these various points have the same magnitude, even though they point in different directions. So the only thing that's changing about these unit vectors is the direction, but not their magnitude. Let's see if we could find a vector that is normal to the unit tangent vector at every point along the curve. You might remember that if a vector is constant in magnitude, then the dot product of that vector with its derivative with respect to some parameter is zero. So what that looks like for the unit tangent vector is if we have the unit tangent vector and we take the dot product with its derivative, the result is equal to zero. We've shown that previously in a previous lecture. Now remember, the dot product between two vectors, if it evaluates to zero, then the two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal. Remember, the significance of a dot product being equal to zero is that those two vectors are perpendicular. You might remember that the alternative definition of the dot product that we often use says that the product of the magnitudes of two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them is equal to the dot product between the two vectors. And in this circumstance, this evaluates to zero. Well, since we have a unit vector, a unit tangent vector that is constant in magnitude but varies along a curve, our dot product between the two evaluates to cosine of theta is equal to zero, and this occurs for either 90 degrees for the angle theta or 270 degrees for the angle theta. So in other words, if the dot product between two vectors is equal to zero, then those two vectors are orthogonal. And as we've shown previously, if we have a vector of constant magnitude, and the unit vector is a vector of constant magnitude, the magnitude is always one. So we've shown if we have a vector of constant magnitude, then that vector dotted with its derivative is equal to zero. So in other words, we have a normal vector. That vector, that normal vector, is the derivative of the unit tangent vector. This normal vector means that it is always normal to the tangent vector at every point along the curve. Now let's define the principal unit 
normal vector. And we will define this principal unit normal vector as a unit vector that is equal to the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. This unit normal vector is always perpendicular to our tangent vector. So let's illustrate this unit normal vector at various points along our curve. So at the point where we have the unit tangent vector t1, there is a unit normal vector perpendicular to that tangent vector. At the location of the unit tangent vector t2, we have another principal unit normal vector in 2. And at the location of t3, we have another normal vector that's perpendicular to our unit tangent vector, as well as at t4. So in other words, every point along this curve has a principal unit normal vector which is just that vector that is tangent to the tangent vector, to the tangent unit vector at every point along the curve. And remember, being a unit normal vector, the magnitude of this unit normal vector is exactly equal to one. So what can we say about this principal unit normal vector? Well, one, the principal unit normal vector in is always orthogonal to our unit tangent vector at all points on the curve C. This is because the unit, the principal unit normal vector is defined based off of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. And since the derivative of the unit tangent vector is the derivative of a vector that's constant in magnitude, it is orthogonal to the unit tangent vector. This means that the unit tangent vector and the principal unit normal vector are always orthogonal to each other. Another property of the principal unit normal vector is it always points towards the inside of a curve with a certain radius of curvature. So you could see that in, in this curve up above. Notice here this principal unit normal vector points inward towards a circle of a certain radius that gives us our radius of curvature at the point 2. And notice here we have another circle that gives us our radius of curvature at that point. And notice how the principal normal vector points inward towards the center of that circle. Now for these flatter surfaces, these are just described by circles of very large radii. And the principal normal vector points towards the center of those circles of very large radii. So the main thing to remember here is that the principal normal vector always points toward the inside, or we could say towards the center of the radius of curvature of a circle that can describe our point. So let's look at a curve, otherwise known as a circle, or at least my version of a circle. This circle has a particular radius, and every point on this circle has a unit tangent vector that is the tangent vector to the point point. 
on that circle. At each of these unit tangent vectors is also a unit normal vector that points towards the center of the circle of radius r. Let's say we have a parabola. If we look at the unit tangent vector at various points on this parabola, we know that this unit tangent vector is tangent to each of those points on the parabola. The principal unit normal vector is perpendicular to the unit tangent vector at each of these points and points inward towards the curve. So to the inside of the curve, if you will. Let's take a three-dimensional curve. A helix for this example. Again, the unit tangent vector is tangent to various points along our helix. And the, there is a principal unit normal vector that is orthogonal to the unit tangent vector at each of these points. Notice once again how the unit normal vector points towards the inside of the curve. 